Hi guys, my name is Marie Panfilo. I'm a character artist for games and cinematics. In this part we continue to set up the lighting and shading for a studio render. In previous lesson we only set one light, dome light, with a HDR image on it. And also we connected textures to our shader. When we did modeling, we looked for references. When we did texturing, we also looked for texturing references and absolutely the same thing for lighting. I should mention that ArtStation and Pinterest are not the only source where you can look for reference. You can also look for films and classic paintings and photography. And ArtStation is the most obvious and most common things where we can go. But I recommend you to look for other sources as well. What can I do? Uh, I can go to ArtStation and look for a similar subject that I do. For example, I can type org and uh, search for all org works on ArtStation. I turn off show pro member artwork first to see more works. And um, I have a lot of variants how I can light my model. I can use both 2D and 3D work. Let's take a look at this one. This is one of options how you can light your scene. Put uh, the bright source of light from the back and the rest will be more ambient and more mm, soft light and uh, works together really good. Another variant how you can light it is uh, create natural light uh, like a sky light uh, when the light shoots from every angle and uh, there is no harsh shadows, everything quite soft and natural. Another way you can light it is make uh, something closer to a studio light. In this case, light sources will be smaller and closer to the character. And uh, there is a particular two lights, one shooting from one side and another shooting from the other side. And in between then there will be a contour shadow. By this type of light you see the details of your model better and uh, you have more drama and emotion when you have this uh, high contrast comparing to this one. I would say these two are the opposite approaches. Uh, the first is more realistic, more natural and uh, showing your model and textures uh, how realistic they are. And uh, the second option is more emotional, more dramatic, and you, you see a lot of sharp details when you uh, do this kind of lighting. So it's up to you to choose what, uh, which one do you prefer. This one got my attention. I like uh, how uh, the lighting here helps with the composition. Uh, we see a big part of a character in the shadow and uh, because of that we have a very good contrast between central face part and side part. It really helps with perception and brings more interest. Also a line uh, behind him on the background adds up a little bit into composition, brings some direction. So with the light you can do many tricks that help you to see the model in a better way. And you can be very creative with that. So first thing that I do is I go to dome light that we created on the last lesson. I go to attribute editor of the light shape and in tint I decrease it down. Last time we made a render with a big size and now in the render settings I want to decrease it down to 1000 and probably make uh, the image vertical uh, I turn off maintain height ratio. So now uh, the dome light is still here, but uh, the influence of it is weak. And on top of that, I want to create new light. I go to Redshift menu, lights, uh, create Redshift physical light. This light I can move by Gizmo the traditional way. Uh, you can notice the light source on the camera. Uh, 
usually we don't want that so if you want to hide it you go to light shape area and turn off visible and the light disappear but it still works uh, I want to increase the size and to place it more accurately I want that my camera look through this light so I go to panels uh, look through selected uh, now I'm looking through my light I can aim it uh, very accurately to my model uh, the way I want usually I set up light this way let's try some backlighting with this one and uh, now the size of the light is relatively small so the shadows will be sharp if we see the shadow he uh, here it's quite sharp if we want uh, to have less sharp shadow we need to go to physical uh, uh, to this light settings and uh, increase the scale uh, let's try 20 and to make it weaker we can either go backward or we can decrease intensity of the light let's try 70 I will call it light 1 going to get back to my perspective camera I hit panels in a viewport and uh, select my perspective camera uh, now I want to create second light I just take this light Ctrl D duplicate and it's now called light 2 and again I can move it uh, by gizmo I can change the color of it uh, let's try blue uh, or same way I can go to panels looks for selected and select the angle uh, from the light view especially with this character I prefer to see darker areas on the eyes I can't just put it in the front because there will be no shadows the light will be everywhere and it will look quite flat there is not much rules I would say uh, that I use it is the only rule that I don't put the light in the front of the same way how camera looks I always want to move the light away from camera to the side or to the top so by adjusting it and it updates pretty quickly I may look for best look that shows the model in the best possible way uh, he have a strong cheekbone and I do want to have sh shadow that makes cheekbone stronger so we need to put it more at the top and we instantly, instantly see shadow at the bottom of cheekbone uh, creates a nice effect and because the lights on top uh, we see shadow here and we don't see the man too much and uh, now if we get back to our dome light uh, we can see if we want uh, ambient light stronger or weaker if we set it to zero our shadows will be maximum strong and we don't see almost anything here and here it's completely black and uh, of course it's not what we want it's uh, too CG when we, you have such strong shadows but th this level is uh, too strong and we kill our sh all shadows so we need, need to find some balance in between the, the stronger shadow will be the more dramatic lighting will be and this is more natural state I may keep tweaking it switching between light cameras and adjusting position more and more it it can take a lot of time and uh, the next day you you're doing this project you may find oh I don't uh, like this light I want to change it so it's 
constant process. If you're not sure which exactly light affecting the view, you can turn them off one by one, Ctrl H, to hide, and uh, check the influence of each light. Uh, for example, I wasn't sure which light make this volume, so now I see uh, what exactly this light does, and I can uh, know that, uh, tweak it more. You can also try to change colors. The classic way to do that is, uh, uh, is to make warm light on the one side and cold light on the other side. They will compensate each other and uh, make an opposite effect. And it's very popular mix of light color. The choice of light color also can depend on your textures. You want your texture to benefit from the lighting color. Uh, some textures might uh, look dirty on some light colors. Uh, for example, this goblin is green and yellow on his texture, and I want uh, the light to uh, not to mix it too much that the skin looks dirty. So let's maybe try white light. Uh, we see more green when the light is white. And if I make it warm, it's more red. So maybe just choose the color of the light based on the texture, on what light the texture lo looks better. And in my opinion, uh, soft blue color, it works good for the skin color. Uh, let's put it this way so far. And if I, just in case, if I don't want to lose position of the light, the same way I did with camera, I select the light. Uh, in channel box, I select translations and rotations uh, with shift, uh, first shift and last one. Uh, right click, case selected. And second light, do the same thing. So again, whenever I move the light and want to try something else, uh, and now I, uh, let's say I don't like the result and I want to switch it back. I just can switch the frame of animation and it will get back to original state. Uh, the studio render always have a background and we can have some color on the background and switch it whenever we like. Uh, but I also like to adjust the back background color in Photoshop. And to do that, I want to create a specific thing for that. I go to render settings and go to menus AOV. It's uh, the amount of passes that we can create for compositing. Let me show you how it works. I look for puzzle made, select it uh, from the list and hit add. Uh, then I go to puzzle made settings here. And here's the settings of this uh, AOV. Uh, here we keep it as a material ID and select a red for one, green for two, and blue for three. And now I select my background and go to material of the background. Let's call it background. Mat. And I go here by hitting this arrow and I go to shading group of a background material and here in the red shift I choose one for material ID. We can expect that this material will have a color. I go to render window and uh, here is uh, the number of passes that we made. Uh, the beauty is uh, the main one, the default one and uh, the second one we just created, puzzle made. Uh, for some reason, puzzle made I can see only on the final render. I don't see it on the IPR. But now we clearly see that the ID that we created for this material works. And we can do the same thing for other materials that we have. Mm, for example, let's try to give the main material, go to its shading group and give it a material ID 2. 
and repeat render. Now it's filled with gray and we still have black uh, and blue color that we can use on the same map as a mask. Using this mask later in Photoshop you can easily uh, change the color of the background and you cannot worry about it on the render. Now I want to switch to shader settings and first uh, I want to do is uh, and in the shader I go to subsurface multiple scattering uh, go here and we have uh, two options for subsurface scattering first is ray traced and second is point based for a long time I used point based it's a simpler one uh, you just insert your albedo textures the same way as you do in Parmaset. For subsurface you just add uh, more reddish and orange layers and it uh, does the trick like that. Another way is ray trace and it's more accurate subsurface. For a long time, particularly in Redshift, I ignored that and I didn't see it there. So these particular characters I already textured for point base so we're, we're going to keep there but I also recommend you to try out ray trace because uh, I think it should look better than point based uh, but I haven't tried it yet in Redshift anyway. Uh, so we created colors uh, for each layer and uh, for layer 1 I start with orange color then I go uh, more to reddish and brighter and then I go to uh, even more deep red like we go deeper into the skin and see new colors inside of uh, the body and uh, layer 1 will be will have reddish 1 L let's start with that layer 2 will have 2 and layer 3 will have reddish 3 and I will move my camera forward to see it better yeah I forgot to change the main parameters in general the amount should be one and uh, instantly we see the result so here you can see the difference in between having subsurface scattering and not having it uh, when you don't have it you have uh, sharp shadows with uh, uh, dark uh, color shadow and you see more details that you made uh, with subsurface everything is getting softer and you see uh, more red colors on the shadows especially when the area is thin you see more of that and it uh, as a skin it looks more natural uh, but now it's uh, too much I guess uh, maybe we will uh, decrease radius a little bit let's try 0, 08 uh, we also did a texture in substance painter for subsurface and we can put it into the amount so I go to the amount uh, checkerboard and go to file and choose uh, the map that we made we call it scattering and I choose UDIM uh, so we can test the difference between having the map and not having it I only should say that in the end on my final render I end up not I ended up not having a map on subsurface scattering and uh, I I just saw that for me it works better without map uh, than having a map so it probably depends how well you paint it and how well you test the work of this map uh, in some situation it's really important to have such map uh, but in my case 100% uh, of subsurface everywhere uh, worked uh, quite well So by adjusting values and make another renders, I
I check how it works better. In some lighting, uh, subsurface scattering can look good and maybe in some other lighting situation you may notice that it's too much or too little. So I feel like it's now too much and I want to decrease it a little. But I may keep adjusting it uh, later on. The problem now is that this subsurface scattering is everywhere, not on the skin, but on the cloth. Uh, we don't uh, need subsurface scattering on the artificial objects. So what we're going to do is uh, I go to Hypershade. Uh, in this field we manage our shaders. Uh, we search for our material that we made, main mat, and hit this icon showing all input and output connection to this shader. I select this and go to edit and duplicate with connections to network. And as you can see uh, these are textures that connected both to this material and this material. Uh, this one will be our skin mat. And this one will be our, uh, I, I can call it mat no SSS. So this material is without SSS, subsurface scattering. I go to its settings, uh, this window is the same as uh, we would have here, just to duplicate it here for the convenience. I go to subsurface scattering and turn it off amount set to zero and this material I'm going to apply to everything except skin and right click assign uh, existing material and I select mat no SSS uh, almost done except one thing uh, if we go to shading group here of this material we will realize that uh, we lost our displacement material. So if we check it on the skin material, skin mat, uh, displacement material is here. But here we have lost it. Uh, we can just create it one more time. I hit this button, file. Uh, same way, I just select in my texture. And one more time, I select udim here, it uh, find all udims, uh, so we can double check it by this path is uh, equal to this path, so displacement, okay, the path is not the same probably, let me just take this path, uh, just to be sure, from the skin and copy past it to this path. Okay, now it's uh, same displacement map on both materials. And uh, now we can render it again and see if it works. As a result, we have skin material with subsurface scattering and uh, other materials result. The same way you can tweak individual parameters of each object if you need to change the specular of this clothes for example you can do it uh, two ways you can adjust the roughness texture in substance painter and update the texture or you can just uh, duplicate material specifically for the clothes and uh, adjust the parameter for the clothes individually one more thing we need to do we have the eyes that works well but also on the top of an eye I made clear material that will have another shader it's a typical scheme of creating an eye this image is provided by ender color and we can see here uh, that we have two objects for an eye one is a eyeball plus iris that 
have the texture and uh, the volume going a little bit inside so we have this curvature inside and because of that we have shadow here this uh, part of an eye usually a bit darker because of this bending inside but but outer part of the eye uh, is completely transparent and the volume goes on uh, the opposite direction outside we can also have a separate model for a pupil uh, but it's more important when you have animated pupil uh, if you don't have one you can just have it on the texture so i uh, hit right click assign new material redshift redshift material and uh, all i need to do is go to refraction and put weight into one mm, not sure about color maybe make make it black just for sure so what this color does it creates a nice uh, rough reflections for the eye so the specific reflection position uh, should be different and it's a more correct way to working the eye uh, something wrong here let's try to match display unlock normals just in case uh, soften edge uh, then i may uh, deslate this object so i go to square shape redshift deslation enable uh, so it will subdivide okay i just realized that this i have a reverse normals so we go to mesh display reverse and this was a problem and now it should work fine Now it works just how we need. Love that. For the render, I'm using NVIDIA RTX graphic cards, uh, Titans. They both work for the render and using almost all the memory. And the render time is 18 seconds, which is really, really great because we already have a displacement, we have a lot of big resolution uh, displacement and other textures 8k mm. the problem now is we have uh, noisy shadows and we want to fix that and once we do that the render time will increase uh, so let's fix uh, this thing i go to settings uh, output and go to sampling overrides it will be here and I need to increase samples for light and reflection at least um, maybe we can start from 512 and to repeat the render Now the render is 46 seconds and we can uh, check how the level of noise improved between uh, this is before and this is after. Um, this sample increasing you can do on each shader that you work with. Uh, you go to your skin mat for example and with your reflection you have samples and uh, in the light source. Uh, you also have uh, samples, but I usually don't touch that. I go directly to the settings and go to sampling overrides and put it here and it replaces all samples settings to each light and each shader. So 46 seconds still good, but we need to add more complexity and I want to replace my temporary hair with uh, real hair that I made before. Here I brought the hair that I made on separate scene. Uh, let's see how heavy they are. 1,700,000 trees. Not too much, but they create lots of shadow and can increase uh, render time dramatically. So let's uh, assign some basic 
material to the hair. Uh, it will be redshift hair. I want. Uh, I keep the settings default and just uh, repeat render one more time. Now render time is one minute and four seconds, and the complexity of the scene is almost what we need to have for such kind of render. Uh, I, I'd probably also turn on GI in some situation, but uh, personally I think for studio renders I don't need to do that. Uh, so for studio render, the render can be really really fast, but on the next lesson I will show you how we can increase the complexity of the scene at the environment and try out another setting for our character.